it's kind of weird how people have forgotten that not not even what like a decade and a half ago they were all into fantasy and it's almost like they're embarrassed of it which they would have every right to be because fantasy at its core is the fodder of geeks and nerds and weirdos it's not meant for the mainstream consumption it's literally meant for losers yeah case in point hella corn i love fantasy but i don't love all fantasy i'm more i'm kind of like a fringe fantasist in the sense that you know i can't consume all fantasy man because fantasy is in fact hella corny <laughs> but if you're gonna go with fantasy you gotta go with the roots the yeah. essence the thing that made it cool and then everybody just ripped it off and made it uncool yeah that's what i'm getting at here there is there, there is cool material in the fantasy realm it's just everybody just kind of does their own version of it and then they ruin it for everyone Next thing you know, you're hanging out next to people I haven't washed in three weeks, pretending to be some sort of elf lord that clearly doesn't get laid in real life, even though he's getting laid all the time in the game. Well, you gotta describe me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was describing your random d and but yeah, go ahead and take that lump. Nah, thankfully I've never gone to those depths of a uh, fantasy nerd. Yeah, that's a good thing. That's, but here, that's, uh, there's like a level of nerdum that I like, refuse to cross. Yeah, yeah. Ditto. Yeah. And that's the thing with fantasy. Now, I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. You know this. I've been a huge Lord of the Rings fan since uh, before the movies. You know, and I thank, oddly enough, uh, uh, you know, look, let's just be honest here. When people think of fantasy, they don't think of black people. Right? In fact, look, I'll go one step further. I don't know what you're talking about. Hold dude. on, man. In fact, I'll go one step further. When when they announced that there was gonna be black folk in Amazon's Lord of the Rings uh, take, what people were like, yeah, exactly. People were like, what? Why? That doesn't make sense. It has nothing. To... <laughs> exactly. And it didn't even have to do anything with racism. It's just so inherently nerdy and white that you're like, what? yeah, there's no way the cool ass black people are gonna be hanging around crappy hobbits. And yeah, shit. you can't have be having Ice Cube just driving by in a lowrider horse. Damn, I was thinking lowrider like <laughs> eagle. Bellerum. <laughs> he's got a chrome pistola. Yeah. For some reason, he's the only one with a gun. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just, it, look, I've been a big fan since before the movies came out. Uh, I was big into the book. Again, it's so weird because I was introduced to it by an African American uh, uh, person, mm. which is like the last person you'd expect to be like, hey, you should read this. And uh, she introduced it to me because she, I just didn't want to read the bullshit that I was being given at school to read. <laughs> You know, I want to read drums. Who gives a shit about drums, man. That was drums. Exactly. What the hell is drums? <laughs> anyway, she's like, "Yo, you don't want to read crap. Here's this. Check this out." Yeah, same person, by the way, that gave me the uh, Stephen King's It the first time I ever read that. I still have it. That's my It edition. But anyway, so she's hella cool, and uh, she's like, "Yeah, you should read this right here, Lord of the Rings." And I was like, reluctant. And I read it, and I was like, hoo, hoo, hoo. I was the, the the sickly type of Lord of the Rings nerd that was not on board for it to be adapted to film. When I heard it was being adapted, I was like, nope, don't do it. I'm not going to watch it. Crossed my arms. Stared at the poster. Stared at the poster of a ring wraith on my wall and said, don't. Mm -mm. <coughs> I'm not on board. I literally did not watch any trailers nothing man i didn't want to hear it i it was it was a thing that was not meant to be i was like there's no way you can never adapt this to film <coughs> and i was one of those people that also knew about peter jackson before peter jackson was a big thing and you know this of course and that was all the more reason i was doubtful and i was like come on man i love pj but that guy is gonna make little rings nope don't want to hear it <clears throat> but i broke man and i thank uh some bullshit uh, Vin Diesel movie, I think it was, if, if I remember correctly, because uh, me and uh, one of my exes uh, went with her brother to go see what I can only call some sort of guy movie. You know what I'm saying? Like some sort of macho guy movie. Triple X. I have a feeling it was a Vin Diesel movie. I don't know why, but I have a feeling I may be wrong, but I know I didn't want to see it, whatever it was. Maybe it was a Fast and Furious movie. I don't know. It was something yeah, that I would never want to watch. So my alternative was 
to see something else. And the only thing that was showing was, just so happened, Fellowship of the Ring. And I said, we're going to go see it. Fuck it. And dude, I was this is pathetically nerdy, man. I went in and I was like, <laughs> like, you know, little fucking lips all tight and shit going, hey, I'm not going to like this. This, this is going to be the most horrifying betrayal of something that I love. And we all know what happened then. Of course, I cried within the first second. Oh, man. That's because I was like, hell yes. You're freaking. You did it, baby. Damn. It's just one of those moments <laughs> in history, movie history, where you just know that they locked it in the moment it fucking opens. It was a good opening. One of the greatest, if not the greatest. Yeah. So, I wasn't the only one, of course. This thing took the world by storm. People were LOTRing up this ass. That's right, up this ass. They were just all up in that, you know? Yeah, they were going home, shooting laser beams into their boyfriend's assholes, like Randolph. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I'm sure New Zealand got tired of a bunch of people just going over and, uh, you know, looking at stuff yeah, having, that may or may not have been on screen. Having grody-ass feet. Uh, it was a thing. It was a phenomenon. The Lord of the Rings was a fucking phenomenon. Took over the world, and uh, not long after it ended... Uh, people try to imitate it and feel miserably. Yeah, I remember you know? Spiderwick Chronicles? Yeah, it was remember just... Remember Aragon? Uh, and it wasn't only, like, fantasy stuff. Like, there was a resurgence of, like, just sword and sandal type stuff. Uh, there was a lot of elements... That, I mean, I'm sorry, there was a lot of films that came up attempting to tap into something similar, and they just couldn't do it. And I don't think anybody really succeeded at doing it. Uh, now that's not to say that they're good or bad films. I'm just saying nobody gave a shit. Nobody cared. So when The Hobbit was announced, a return to Middle Earth, people once again got excited. Like, all right, hell yeah, we got PJ coming back. At the time, it was uh, not only PJ producing, but it was Guillermo del Toro in the director's chair. Of course, he had done, uh, he, he had made quite the indelible impression upon the mainstream audience at that point. Uh, Everybody was excited, I think, about a return to Middle Earth. And for a nerd like me, it was like, all right, cool. Except, except that I wasn't a fan of The Hobbit, yeah, the mean. book. You know what I'm saying? I always felt it was a book that, uh, well, I, I don't even have to say I felt like it was. It is a book that was made for kids. So I was like, man, they better change the fuck out of this book. I'm talking like <coughs> big time. And they better, one of my biggest pet peeves, they better focus on the stuff that's insinuated, implicated, mentioned, but never ever fucking elaborated upon. I was doubtful to say the least, but the names involved gave me confidence. And then what happened? After some years of development, Guillermo del Toro said, nope, not going to do it. Now, the reasons are not clear to say the least adventurers say he read the book <laughs> i mean something happened man something obviously happened that may have soured the relationship there i don't know what it was i don't know how much of guillermo del toro's vision remains because he still gets credited for the script in part i mean so i don't know man there, there's visual cues in the movie especially part one of the trilogy we'll talk on that right now that make me think that you know there was still touches of, of of his influence there even on a visual level i don't know but he left and that's a bad sign when somebody just leaves a project they've been developing for years all right so what do we do now well it appeared that peter jackson didn't want to fucking take the project at all because you know lord of the rings broke him so he didn't want to even do it but when shit came to shit and nobody was, was you know, going to take that gargantuan task at hand, he ended up doing it. Somewhat reluctantly, oh, some yeah. would say. In fact, very uh, reluctantly. Infamous scenes of him in the, on the set looking like he wants to die because they're writing it on the spot, apparently. Yeah, so uh, things were not looking good. And then came the biggest punch to the anus to, to this entire endeavor. The Hobbit was going to be shot at a higher frame rate. Now, if you don't know, movies look like movies. Movies look cinematic because they're shot at a 24 frame per second frame rate. That's what makes movies look like movies. That's why they look so distinct. That's why they have that feeling. That's why soap operas don't look like movies, etc. 
They were shooting this motherfucker at what, 60, I think? One billion, I remember. I think it was 60 frames per second. It was double. Which, granted, gives you a higher quality picture, more information to um, put up on the screen. But it loses that cinematic quality. And they were doing this because it was going to be in 3D and... You know, it's going to be a more immersive way to display the 3D and to achieve this uh, this uh, immersive 3D uh, atmosphere. They basically, well, they basically shot everything on fucking sets. <laughs> Not everything, but you know, there was a lot of set action going on. And when you're shooting at such a high frame rate, everything looks fake. So when the first trailers hit. Holy shit, people were like, what is this atrocity? Yeah, it looked like peace. It looks like a soap opera, I a fake-ass soap opera. First time I ever saw it was at a movie theater, and it was shown in that frame higher rate. frame rate with with Guardian. We were both instantly like, oh no, this is going to suck ass. Not to mention that first trailer was very heavy on the dwarves mm -hmm. and comedy, and it instantly destroyed my, my love for anything. Yeah. That's it, period, anything, ever. Hopes were dashed, to say the least, and people, though they turned out in droves and the the, the Hobbit movies were very successful uh, money-wise, it's safe to say that they were not as well-received as Lord of the Rings. Not even close in terms of, you know, the way the audience reacted to them. Lord of the Rings was a phenomenon. The Hobbit movies were a thing that people felt obligated to watch, kind of, you know. Uh, I, however, was... Locked up, so I didn't get to see them, which kind of was a blessing in various ways. But uh, I did eventually get out, and uh, one of my first uh, objectives was to see the Hobbit movies. And of course, as with Lord of the Rings, they released extended versions. So I, paying no mind to all the warnings, decided I'm just going to go straight into the extended editions. And perhaps this was a foolish thing for me to do. In fact, it was. Because, of course, what we're talking about today, the first installment is The Hobbit. This is a very long intro. An unexpected journey. Well, an intro. It's a little recap here. We gotta set up the to set the tone, man. We gotta do an extended edition version of this video. Yeah, because we have done this video before. Well, at Indeed. least for the other two. So, what we have, of course, is this gargantuan length version of uh the hobbit here it, it chimes in at 182 minutes um not as long as the lotr extended of course but you know pretty fucking long i'd yeah. say and uh look man i don't know because i've never watched the theatrical i don't know what's missing in the theatrical versus this but this of all three extendeds is the one that has the least added to it i am so, I think it only has like 20 minutes added to it. Damn, so, the majority of the shit is in there in the theatrical version. And I can't believe that they would do that. Let's just get this out of the fucking way here. The Hobbit is a fucking slim-ass tome. Mm. It should have been one movie, maybe two. And and we're done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I could see two movies coming out of it. Given what, <coughs> given what they gave us, I could have seen two movies. I could have seen this movie reduced to 30 minutes, boom, attached to the beginning of part two, and then uh, there you go. Two and three would be the movies, really. But that's not what we got. We got this massive thing. And uh, I'll say it, the first time I watched it, I, was, I wasn't happy. You know what I'm saying? I, w I wasn't hating, but I was definitely not pleased. I just was like, why, <coughs> why on earth did some of this stuff happen at all? So we're going to talk about that, man. We're going to talk about our reactions here. This is my second time viewing it. And uh, I'm just going to start by saying that it was much easier to digest the second time. Not just because it's the second time. Slap that on the back of the box and sell it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, official quote. Yeah. TDS. Nobody cares. But uh, yeah, man, it was much easier to digest. But the stuff that sucks. It's bad. It's fucking anus. You know what I'm saying? And it's not even like Hobbit anus. It's like straight up Wrong, Goblin yeah. King anus. Oh. So let's get into the nitty gritty of this, man. Uh, look, uh, I'll give them credit for the stuff that's loyal to the book. 
uh, as loyal to the book. However, as I've mentioned, The Hobbit is a kid's book. So there's stuff that they should have changed tonally to fit into what they had already established in yeah. Lord of the Rings. You know, uh, the trolls talking is the one that stands out uh, a lot for me. And I told you ahead of time, and it still shocked you how bad it's, that was. It's terrible. It's it's super long, that scene. Mm-hmm. And it's I guess it's supposed to be funny. Yeah. But really, the whole time, you want to die. Yes, man. It, look, uh, it's established in Lord of the Rings that, that the, the, the trolls, they're dumb brutes. Uh, you could have achieved that scene just the same. Well, hopefully not just the same, but you could have achieved the goals of that scene by having brutish cave trolls do cave troll things. But instead, they're like the Three Stooges. Only bad. Only horrible. And uh, of hor- horribly unfunny, dude. It's just bad. Yes. Like you said, the intention is comedic and it's just... It's feces. It's feces. Yeah. It's, it's bad feces. <laughs> Uh, there's that uh, the Goblin King. Uh, Goblin King was like one of the literally one of the worst things ever put to film. Yeah, you've uh, ever previously we've mentioned uh, <laughs> that you know just on a phys- oh, I'm sorry on a special effects level it's atrocious. Yes, just it's, feels like a video game. It's it's shocking character. how bad the effects on him are mm-hmm. because the movie itself has surprisingly good effects like yeah. cg when it comes to cg um you know like Gollum in this looks damn near realistic and yet when the freaking uh, goblin king comes up you're like oh my god but yeah man the, the chin physics are like how is how did anyone approve that yes and look one thing that a lot of people don't that, that never read the books that don't realize is that Lord of the Rings, even, which is a much more serious and epic scale novel than The Hobbit. It's, it's, it's for adults. Um, even then has songs in it. Yeah. And they have a purpose. It would have been very interesting to hear that type of music as it is done in Lord of the Rings, in Lord of the Rings. However, <coughs> they decided to introduce that in The Hobbit. For some reason. For some reason. At the weirdest times, again, they happen in the book... But do we need to have the Goblin King do his sing- song and dance? Yes. Like you say, it completely deflates, while we were watching it, it completely deflates Yeah, because any of the menace that was established yeah, for the goblins. Leading up to that point, you know, the, the goblins are taking them down, down, down to Goblin Town. And you're like, damn, these goblins are pretty spooky looking, you know. Uh, you know, there, there's going to be some bad shit happening down at Goblin Town. And then the dickhead comes out with massive scrotes chin and is like and down 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 to a goblin town you're like dude yeah sucks and instantly you're like not invested in that scene there's a scene in rivendell where the goblins i'm sorry the goblins uh the hobbits i get fuck man the uh, dwarves dwarves are kind of being uncouth in the realm uh of these elves and once would have been enough but they do this several times and it feels like why did you keep on harping on this you know it's not funny it's not cool it's funny the first time or it's amusing the first time but then after that you're like all right we understand the concept here that these elves and and dwarves are not meshing well (laughs) but then they have to cap it off with the song and dance number and you're like why why did we go there man again not cool not cool, just I think there's unnecessary. Only, there's only one that kind of works. You know, that one that's really slow. And yeah, just, the, the kind of like a dearth-like uh, solemn song before yeah. the, yeah. And you know what? The, this is before the dwarves head out. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're, 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 they're I guess, meditating on, uh, on this whole endeavor. And they're singing a song that's historically relevant to them. I actually felt that song should have been extended while we see the imagery of them starting their voyage yeah uh instead it cuts off abruptly and you're like this is the one time you yeah. could use this music the one time that worked yeah um yeah it's it's confusing and it, every time it happens you're like ah why yeah it's jarring uh now when i first saw this uh, this thing always pissed me off in the book 
you know, we have a, a, a Bilbo, and he's inadvertently thrown into being a host as the dwarves come into his home, and he's swept up into this adventure. Uh, the first time I saw it, this part felt interminable. Yeah, it was actually shorter and nice than you made it seem. Yeah, like... Uh, and Still then, very long, though. <laughs> upon rewatching it, yeah, it didn't feel as long. It's definitely not as long as I remembered it the first time. But the first time I watched it, I was like, maybe it's because in the book, I just hated that part. Yeah. Like, dude, these fucking hobbits, I mean, these dwarves suck. I think you know? the only part that's really bad is when they're coming in and wrecking havoc. You're like, dude, yeah. just get past this. Again, all that could have been, been done more seriously and much more succinctly. <clears throat> we didn't need to have all this. It's just so tonally different yeah. to what was already established for Lord of the Rings. And not even just that, but totally different from other stuff that happens later in the movie. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's these more serious moments in that, you, yeah, you have freaking trolls farting in the scene before. Yeah, I'm man. Like, what? And, 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 you know, that's what's kind of disappointing about this movie, that there's super awesome shit in it. And then all of a sudden, you'll have these things that are like, just do not feel like they belong. And it's usually comedic or intent. It's supposed to be comedic anyway. And you're like, ah, what the f-? And sometimes you feel like, well, that could have worked, but then they keep pushing it like, stop. But anyway, that aside, what's something that you found uh, yourself at odds with uh, in regards to this picture? Uh, the length. Um, obviously, I'm not against a long movie. Mm-hmm. You know, like like the freaking extended cuts, which are apparently 18,000 lo- hours long. We found out recently. Yeah. Actual running time, by the way. Um, but it just feels like there's a lot of shit that doesn't need to be there. Like the trolls, like the goblin shit that you could have just easily cut out and it would have made a better movie. Yeah. Um... You know, trim the shit with the freaking dwarves in the beginning. There's, this is the point. This is a a, a a a example of maybe rein it in, Pete. Yeah. You know, like you don't need to put every single little thing in there because it does slow the movie down. Now there is long scenes that I could see someone feeling that way about, that like they're boring, but I actually like, like the golem. Right, right, right. And, you know that goes on for a long time, and the and and the. The the little console with freaking Gandalf and, and Saruman and stuff. That goes on for a long time. But those are actually interesting. Yeah. And so the long kind of just people talking shit works because it's interesting shit that you're seeing. I found that for the most part, the <clears throat> scenes that I thought didn't work were scenes that were in the book. You know? Like the super long time in, in the Goblin. I don't think the Goblin section should have been taken out because that's kind of important for the Gollum stuff. Cut the Goblin King. But, cut, yeah, cut the fuck out of the Goblin King. Or, like, I don't know, make him menacing? Yes. Not a piece of shit? Uh, again, even in the book where he sings and dances, he's more menacing than he is in this book, in this movie. He's just a fucking joke. He's a clown shoe, man. In bad. This, in this fucking thing. I, 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 he's so bad a character. But anyway, um, I feel that could have been a reduced in size. I mean, in length. Um so there's that uh let me see i'm trying to think of something else uh bah, 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 bah. The, the the sequences uh with the uh, stone giants fighting it's cool to look at it gets you somewhere but you don't need that no. in there you know you don't need that and yes i think most uh most disposable is the setup in the shire and with the dwarves and all that stuff, we already this you is a just prequel. do that like in the freaking journey. You don't need all that. Change. Yeah, yeah. This is a prequel. You know, in terms of the way the movies were released, we can consider this a prequel. We already know the habits of hobbits and the way they behave. We don't need to be reintroduced to that. Uh, we definitely don't need to be reintroduced. I mean, introduced piece by piece. To these dwarves we could do that like you say along the way uh, it would have just cut so much time out to 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 condense that stuff the rivendell sequence needed to be trimmed namely in terms of yeah. the joke shit yeah the white council <clears throat> stuff it's not in the book and it's super awesome there you know it's mentioned in passing later in the book 
but uh, it's not elaborated like it is here. And it's one of the coolest scenes in the movie. Literally, the coolest scenes in the movie were not in the book, for the most part, you know. I do like some stuff that they expanded upon. I know some people were like, oh, uh, you know, up in arms. Oh, why did he have to have this? Just stick to the story of the book. Honest, again, honestly, I think the stuff that is added is cooler than the stuff that is there. And it usually touches upon stuff that is implicated in the book, but never elaborated upon, especially in the later two sequels. But uh, here, it's, it's setup material. And because it's stuck in the middle of all this slog, you know, it, 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 it doesn't service that setup material very well because the pacing is a little bit weird. You know, so <clears throat> despite that, with some judicious fucking trimming, and I don't think the theatrical good would solve it. <clears throat> no. Even twenty minutes is not enough. You could have trimmed it's easily, like, it's like, like an hour and a half. Yeah. Look, let me just put it this way: Fellowship of the Ring is approximately fucking four hours in his extended version, and it doesn't feel like that at all ever. Yeah. This feels lengthy at times. It it, it really does. Um. And it, it's weird because nothing that you're seeing other than, like, occasional moments where you're, like, Fushila is, is, is like, bad. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing is terrible. It just you feel the length of it because it's so disjointed. I don't know, dude. That fucking goblin scene and, no, well, yeah, and yeah, that I'm, troll scene yeah. is pretty terrible. I, obviously, there's there's scenes that are freaking caca on sticks yeah. that stuck into your culo. But <laughs> like a goblin, <laughs> or like a like a like a wizard shooting laser beams <laughs> into, your, into your ass, but but like for the most part, like you know the stuff you're watching has quality to it. Yeah. But it just feels long at times, mm -hmm. and and it does pick up like it's pay like I do think that they try to like keep it interesting with a lot of action, but even that kind of gets numbing at some point. Like for example, the the stuff with the with the big giants like that you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier that was the scene where it's like it's cool to look at but it kind of gets to a point where it's like it's too much shit going on yeah the, you know in the book <clears throat> in the book that scene is more of a like a world building scene than anything i mean it gets them somewhere but it's more like a world building scene we've already built this world in yeah. the lord of the rings trilogy we don't need more <clears throat> world building uh it could have easily been excised uh, it's cool that it's there. Don't get me wrong. It's a pretty cool scene. Yeah. But again, lots of judicious editing could have could have made this a breezier affair. Now that being said, uh, I'm not in the camp of hating this movie at all. I think there's tons of cool. In fact, I dare say the cool stuff outweighs the shitty stuff. It just so happens that of the three Hobbit movies, <clears throat> this is this is this is the one that's the hard one to get through. Uh, I will say the second time watching it, it was much easier to get through. Like, I actually had a fun time watching it. But uh, let's talk about the cool stuff, man. I really like that they expanded Azog's um, uh, fucking uh, uh, role, you know, in the story. That's uh, He's, you know, something that's just kind of <coughs> briefly there in terms of, of the, uh, the, the novel. I, I, I shudder to call it a novel because, come on, man, it's like sliver thin but you know it's a novel whatever uh so that's pretty cool the white council stuff setting that up uh radagast being introduced early that's cool because you know not a thing that happens and he wasn't in the lord of the rings trilogy yeah no. which he was you know actually briefly in in the books so that's cool uh, i do not like the way radagast is portrayed in it Damn, he... uh, in the first Hobbit movie. You I know? thought he was okay. No, 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 he's okay. Yeah. It's just, at first, I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. Corny. But I think he kinda, it's better. He kind of grew on me a little. Yeah. And in, little, the, in the last two, he's, he's awesome. He's got a little snaggle. Yeah, I could do without the snaggle. I don't want my fucking Ishtari wizards to be fucking snaggle tooth, damn it. Look, as a man who had a snaggle tooth for a long time, I, like the, I, like, I like the representation. Uh, uh, yeah, man, it was cool to see Radagast at least in a fucking movie. Uh, so uh, yeah, stuff like that, uh, setting up the 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 evil growing in Dol Guldor, awesome. Here we get the first hints of the Necromancer. That's awesome because in the book it's literally 
a scene that happens off screen, quote unquote. And you're like, why? So actually having it set up and built up to, and it pays off awesomely in the fucking later movies. Uh, that's cool. All that shit was really cool. You know, uh, so there's tons and tons of cool shit here to chew on if you're a fan. It's just, uh, it made some odd choices. Yeah. Let's just say that. I think even like, I'll, I'll praise some of the action, like big action set pieces. Mm -hmm. But even like I mentioned, even even with those that are cool to look at and are interest or like, you know, entertaining, they go a little too long sometimes, you know. Um, were to the point where you're kind of like a little bit not desensitized, but you're kind of like this could have been a little shorter. But even though they are really cool looking, I think the major issue with those is that despite having an assortment of dwarves to play with, you don't get distinctive scenes for them. It's just kind of yeah. like a mishmash of action. The only one that stands out is Gandalf. Yeah, and, dude, and uh, and of course Thorin. But you know, uh, they're the only ones that stand out as distinct fighters. And Gandalf be kicking ass. Let's just get that yeah, out of the way. That's, that's one of the biggest pluses. Freaking Gandalf be like a spider monkey in this dude. Like... Yeah. As a Gandalfite. Yeah. <laughs> this pleased me greatly. In fact, he's the only one that really you could say besides Thorin kicks fucking ass in this movie. Um, out of the good guys. Uh, so, but yeah, the the, the dwarves, <laughs> they don't get distinctive action sequences for the for their personalities. Yeah, so you kind of end up forgetting like some of them exist. Yeah, this is something that is remedied, by the way, in part two and three. They actually focus on the dwarves' personalities and even their fighting styles, and that's good. But here they don't, so yeah. it kind of just becomes a blur, yeah. you know, a little bit. Uh, so that's an issue. But let's talk about those dwarves, man. Uh, one of the weirdest choices that they made for this fucking movie uh, series is making the dwarves. So strange looking. Uh, again, Lord of the Rings already existed. They had already established the lore there. Uh, you know, dwarves generally look like they are represented in Lord of the Rings yeah. as we understood it visually as a movie watching audience. Yeah. I realize in the books that's different, but, you it's know. In movies. Yes. So to have introduced these kind of like goofball designs yeah. to some of the dwarves, to the majority of the dwarves, it's just such a fucking kick in the nuts. I can't even, I can't even lie. Like I have seen all three of them mm -hmm. and that is the thing that I consistently hate throughout yeah. all three movies. The designs the for designs some of these are dwarves are bad. atrocious. Yeah, yeah. Terrible. Like what, who wears their hair like that? You yeah. know, uh, just so exaggerated and cartoony. And then you have the ones that just look like normal people. Yeah. You know, like Thorin and Philly and Killy. They look normal. But then you have these hideous, atrocious I things. Think, I think there's even some of the more, like, exaggerated ones that are okay. Like, the, the old guy. He yeah, looks, yeah, He yeah. looks fine. That looks fine. But, like, then you have freaking that guy with a bald head that's just hideous. Yeah. And this is like, what is this? Just some questionable ass design work. Like, who thought that this was cool? Was it Guillermo? Yeah. <laughs> and there's even, like, it's, it's, it, it's, it's confusing because since they are in heavy makeup, you could just tell it's makeup. It's good makeup. Mm hmm But it's... It's like, so it's, excessive that it's It's obvious, distracting, yeah, 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 because there's so much of it. So... It, just that's to me is one of the most mind-boggling decisions. We're supposed to spend time with these people. We're supposed to like these people, and don't get me wrong, they become very likable. It's just in this first one, holy shit. There's not enough for them to do, oddly enough. Yeah. And then they look hideous to boot. So you're just like, oh, man, you you can't unfocus on how awful they are. Yeah. Looking, you know. <clears throat> so uh, just. That's to me is the the most mind boggling decision they made, uh, to to just make them so fucking distractingly ugly. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with an ugly character. Don't get me wrong. It's just do they did they did like ninety five percent of them have to suck visually? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I I don't get that man. I, I don't get what the point of that. It's not funny looking. It's not amusing looking, and it just adds a layer of confusion. Yeah, what was like established. How, how, how do they end up looking like that in Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Like differing, you know? Yeah, man. Uh, and again, it's just so tonally dissonant. 
Like you couldn't align the tone of this movie to the Lord of the Rings. You you couldn't do that. Why? Because the book? No, that's not a good reason. That, that's a <laughs> shitty reason. Yeah. You know, uh, I felt like it pleased no one. You know, it can't please the fans of the movies. And it sure as hell can't please fans of The Hobbit because there's also serious shit in this that feels more in line with, you know, the, the trilogy. So, overall, a mixed affair in that regard. Um, of course, the music is beautiful. The locations are awesome. Uh, the effects are pretty much top-notch. Some better than uh, the original trilogy, of course. You know, uh, we don't have a... Legolas awkwardly jumping on on a horse or, you know, scenes like that. Um, so that's a plus. Yeah. I do think that in the first, like, ten minutes, which really kind of dies out, thankfully, but it is noticeable in the first, like, half, you're like, woo, clean that lens, man. That shit no, was it, was just, it was just the flashback sequence. That yeah, had, uh, homies was lensy. Yeah, the, the, the introduction sequence was... I mean, yeah. it's supposed to give that, you know... You know. Yeah, I didn't like it. <laughs> I, I liked it. I liked it. It was pretty it cool. Gave it off, it's kind of like cheap looking. Nah. <laughs> that's it. That's my... Uh, <laughs> Good one. That's my... That's my. Uh, that's the extent of it right there. To be fair, I'm a huge hater of vasting lenses. Like, anytime there's vast The irony being lens. that you vast your ass constantly. Yeah, but it's not my lens. There's some sort of error that just popped up on the screen, mm-hmm. so that's a good sign, right? Oh, yeah. Um... Yeah, man. Uh, some odd choices yeah. made along the way here. Uh, I don't know how they shot this. Uh, I guess I could watch the material here that's provided, but uh, I'm kind of afraid that it will break the movie more. Uh, but it's a movie that people saw. So, and you know, they had already filmed the other two. Basically, the process was already in motion anyway. So, it was a movie. It was movies that were going to happen no matter what. And that's a good thing if you're a fan, and I'm glad that they did. It's just this first one was a was a fucking pill to swallow. At times, yeah, got that shit. Now, uh, the orcs here notably are uh, effects, as in computer effects, for the most part. Uh, there, are, there's are still some physical work being done, of course, but there's a notable shift towards more computer <laughs> effects. Uh, what'd you think of that right there? I think, uh, for the most part, they're fine. Like, especially the, weirdly, the goblins, not counting the Goblin King. Mm-hmm. Those look really good. There was, I was looking at the background when they, when they were, like, captured, and I was like, man, there's some cool little, like, rat-looking guys. Yeah. They were, they were cool. I do have issues. Like, the freaking Goblin King looks like shit. Yeah, that's a penis if I've ever seen um, one. And I, I, I kind of, like, even though it's a good effect... The, the, uh, I forgot his name, the pale guy. Azog? Super fake. Even though it's a good effect, it looks super fake. You know what? The, the weird thing is, like you say, it's a good effect. Like, if you like fantasy artwork, he looks straight out of a fantasy, like, cover. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or, or painting or, you know, trading card or whatever. He looks good in that regard as a fantasy creature. But yeah, he's never Convincing, real looking. Yeah. yeah. It's it's odd because it's it like like I said it like technically you can tell that it's a very good effect, you know you can see like a lot of detail and stuff, but it just never looks real, mm-hmm. never looks convincing in any way. Whereas I think a lot of the other orcs do look convincing when they are effects. Yeah, some it's, of them look really cool. It's just for some reason him and and the of course the Goblin King looks a complete mierda. You know, there's a, there's a effects that just pop out and you're like. Ugh. I do feel some of the orcs should have been, like, not as gigantic. Because, you know, again, in Lord of the Rings, we have, like, this ultimate warrior race yeah. being bred in the Uruk-hai. They are very Urukan. Yeah, and these some of these fuckers are bigger than Uruk-hai. So, that's weird. But, uh, you know, whatever. I guess Azog just hang out with the Chads or whatever. But, uh, yeah, uh, the wargs uh, look more wargish. But at the same time, they look more fake. Yeah, it's interesting. Super so fake. that's weird. And uh, they didn't look particularly real in the, in the you know mm-hmm. original. Trilogy. But they looked like they were an actual. Yeah, animal. they looked like a beast more yeah, in, in Lord of the Rings. Here, here they look like, like really fake wolves. Yeah, yeah. 
So you know what did they look like? They looked like the wolf in three hundred. Yeah, that's yeah, super you're right. fake. Wolf. Only bigger. Yeah. yeah. So you know some of the effects are hit or miss, but they're kind of cool in that fantasy way. Yeah, I, th- I think when it, it comes down to like they're all pretty good technically, with the exception of the Goblin King. Damn, the Goblin King um, in the neck. But some of the designs are just a bit off. Like, mm-hmm. you know i mean even though like you said it does look cool that 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 pale orc whether it maybe it's just the color i don't know it just looks off um though it is a good effect is yeah that comes sure. down i think to to design i'm pretty sure him being white in pallor didn't help you know bring across the credibility yeah. very well but uh yeah overall the effects are very satisfying the music awesome locations of course great uh, there is a different look to the movie. Again, part of that may be because of the 60 frames per second thing. But, you know, these movies are digitally graded heavily. Um, and it looks distinctly different to <clears throat> the trilogy, the Lord of the Rings trilogy in a lot of ways. There's a more, um, I guess, saturated uh, color spectrum here. Uh, lots of dark hues and, and rich, rich colors that are more toned down than the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Uh, and again, it helps that there's 60 years that take place between this movie, these movies and later ones. So, you know, I guess it's fine. And it does look cool. But I would have, it would have been nice to have more, you know, again, a little tonal, in this case, color-wise, a consistency as well. So uh, just a thing that, you know, just nitpicking there. Uh, Gandalf kicks ass. Gandalf the gay, that is. Uh, so anyway, anything you've got to get off your chest before we give this a final rating? Goblin King's terrible. Dude, Goblin King's I hate, awful. I hate my life every time I saw him. I don't understand why how how he's flash like and catches up to them at the end. Like, dude, you fell like five miles behind. How'd you get there so quick? But thankfully, he gets his guts cut, so that's good. I feel like if somebody hadn't watched Lord of the Rings before watching, if this was the first movie that came out, there probably wouldn't have been another movie. Yeah. Because. It does require a lot of forgiving shit that you're seeing. That and a lot of the stuff that's set up is set up with very little explanation. You know, like if you're not familiar with the lore, then some of the setups just seem like nonsense until they pay off in two and three. Now, people going into this, having already seen the original trilogy, were more forgiving of that. Like probably like, all right, uh, we're going to get payoff for this here because some of the stuff they set up here doesn't pay off in this movie. Pays off literally in two and or three. So I feel if this movie had... It's like the movies they release nowadays trying to set up a universe. If this movie had been the first one, people would have been like, what the fuck? Why did that happen? I don't yeah. understand. Why didn't that pay off? Um, but it helped Which that, is, you know, it was precedence. It's interesting that that wasn't a problem with the originals because the first one was literally just walking. Yeah, but the originals are so well uh, yeah, exactly. structured. And, and, and that that's, that, that's why it's so impressive. That the first one literally, like, not much happens. But you're like totally into it and it feels like a complete movie even though it clearly isn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas these you're kind of like, well, I guess he'll pay off. Yeah, the, the originals are so... It's it's the fucking feat of world building. Yeah. The, 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 especially Fellowship of the Ring. Stunning. Like you say, it could have been a standalone. Yeah. You know? Even though obviously it doesn't it finish but yeah. it just feels so complete. Uh you know, yeah, like at the end of those those original three, you feel like you were on an adventure. And you're yeah, kind of like you need a you need to rest for a year. And then the, the whereas great, these, you're like, dude, a year. The impressive thing about the originals is that uh, theatrical or extended, you're like, hell yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. Um. I don't know how this would be with these. <laughs> so anyway, whatever. You know, that's 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 that. Let's give it a rating in in terms of. Films of its type. I think we can both agree that Lord of the Rings trilogy is probably like at the top tier of quality when it comes to fantasy. So it's pretty safe to say we'd give at least one of those three, if not all three tens. Um, 
or close to it anyway. So in comparison to that, where would you put the first Hobbit installment, uh, <clears throat> An Unexpected Journey, a.k.a. An Unexpected Thing you saw at the fucking theater when you were expecting awesomeness and got, like, some awesomeness and then some some very bad humor. It's kind of weird because it is... A lot of it is really cool. And at the end, you don't... At least I didn't feel like I hated myself. Mm -hmm. But there is so much feast in there. And so much like... It feels like filler. I don't want to say it's filler. But it feels like filler. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So... Like if I have if I have to be real, despite all the cool shit... I have to give it at most like a six. Because there's so much feces in there. And it just needed an editor... Um, but there is a lot of cool shit, so it's like a, it's like a good six. I just have to be real here. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be with you, man. The good stuff is great. It's it's awesome to see, but yeah, that just some of the confusing decisions, confusion, the confusing decisions they made, the ones that you can't get rid of, like the character designs. Yeah. Uh, those are weird. Um. The humor is at times horrible. God, like the troll thing, dude. Yeah, like honestly, if I'm being real here, it's probably like a five. But there's a lot of cool shit in there. Yeah, the good shit is so good, and you and and uh, really, it's more like a six in retrospect. Like if if this had been my first time through, I would have given it a four. Yeah, and that four was only because the good shit, but. Now in retrospect, having watched it twice, you know, a little bit more even-minded and all that jazz. Yeah, I feel comfortable giving it a six. And it's because of how that stuff pays off later, mainly. Which I don't think is really good, per se, yeah. but you know what I mean? I do feel that there is, like, though, like I said, though it has cool moments, there is a level of disappointment that you feel, you know, with it. Because you're like, oh, man, the, the streak... Is over. Yeah. And now it's been replaced by dwarven streaks, which is just feces. On big ass underwear. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this is a movie yeah. <laughs> that exists, and you have to get through it now to watch the other awesome ones. Like all of them. This is literally at the beginning of the fucking movies now. Yep. So that's weird. It's kind of like the Phantom Menace of, of this. I don't want to compare uh, Star it's Wars. Not that bad. Dude. I'd rather watch this yes. than any Star Wars movie. But anyway, uh, maybe not Rogue One. Rogue One's pretty awesome. I'd rather watch that uh, than this. I think I would rather watch this still. Yeah, you think so? I th like I said, the cool parts are cool. I would true, just fast true. forward through all the shitty ones. That's a lot of fast forward. <laughs> it might break your fucking device. <laughs> that button just explodes. Anyway, uh, let us know what you think about this thing that happened, and they're disappointed everyone. Um, you know, well, what good. What are the good parts to you or the bad parts? Let us know. Also, the Eagles don't get enough credit here for what they've done. Yeah. Them homies. Them homies is the real heroes. Uh, anyway, we're out, guys. Uh, hit like, share, subscribe, those notification buttons. Bye.